Hello again. It's another cold winter day, so I have my cup of hot tea. Today, I have this really awesome new strainer. I really love it. Um, just trying to find my favorite strainer. Um, I broke the first one that, you know, flips and latches. It just rusted apart. Second one that twists, I can sometimes I don't want to say never <laughs> I, I do get it right but sometimes I don't get it twisted on right and it just comes open and spills the tea inside my inside my mug and then I'm eating my tea and I thought ooh a spoon one would be amazing but not one of those weird spoon ones that you see it looks like some kind of kitchen utensil something that looks like a real spoon and I found one on Etsy actually I bought two because having a spare is a good idea I also have spare mugs because my first one got broken and I like this mug so much. I like this mug so much. It's just the perfect shape, you know? You can hold it there. <laughs> just... I would love to design some mugs with this shape. It's the only mug I've seen in this shape. Some other cauldron shaped ones have little feet, but I don't care about feet. But I would love to design some cauldron mugs if anyone knows how I can do that. I would love to do that. Anyway, we are on to 1918. I'm not sure how far we'll get today. I don't want it to be a really long video again. I prefer not to have them get up to an hour in length. It just seems a little, ah, uh, you know, just, just a little much maybe. Um, so I'm trying to stay under 40 minutes if I can. It's difficult to figure out how long these are going to be since I I film more than ends up in the video uh, with little pauses and breaks and do-overs and whatnot. But um, I've read four months. I mean, I've read the whole thing, but I read four months ahead just to be prepared. We might just read three months today. I'm going to keep an eye on the time and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, this might help me. I have a little stand here. I could put that there and watch how it's going. No, that's um, that's too, too in the way. We'll just keep it there. Anyway, we are on to 1918. I, you know, took some notes for the session, um, and uh, did a little research this morning on my notes. And um, let's see, anything I need to say before we get started. 1918 is when the Spanish flu hit, but it, it does not hit in the first in the beginning of the year. It hits later in the year, so that is not right away. But it is this year that that hits. So stay tuned if you want to hear what she says about the Spanish flu. I'm also sharing bits and pieces of the diaries on TikTok, and um, have I done? I, I think I might have shared a little bit of it on Instagram. I want to do more like quick little videos, um, but you know, it's always kind of a time thing. I got a lot going on uh, here in my room, a lot going on here in my room. Um, I'm also going to do a live stream. And by the time you see this, I might have done it already, um, but I want to do a live stream and just just let you pick out a diary and I can open it and read something and I think that would be fun and maybe we could do that once in a while you know and just just see what's in there because I've got so many I recently bought one from my hometown I think I think it's from Lancaster Pennsylvania I don't have it yet but I was excited about that and it was cheap and I grabbed it so we'll see if she has anything interesting to say with that said we will begin reading and if I remember anything else I want to mention I will mention it at the end also trying to jump on the trend of having lights in the background <laughs> you know um, I like it apparently a lot of other people like it too having string lights or colored lights in the background I, I do like it especially since I have difficulty kind of giving more depth to my videos and I like lights and these are new. I did have some solar power, uh, solar powered string lights at one point. Uh, I think I still have one of them up in the attic and then a whole like net of string lights, not solar powered. 
Um, these are solar powered, but there's no sun, so I've plugged it in. And, um, oh yeah, I don't know. I like them. It's kind of neat. So that's, that's the backdrop for 1918. Just a little late holiday spirit. I don't know. Just finding ways to perk up the background. So, okay, here we go then. Tuesday the 1st. Uh, 1918. Ruth and I went for a walk with Uncle Gurdon, James, and Betty. We went to the park and all through the museum. It is just like a day in summer. It is Grandpa's birthday. Aunt Ella, Grandpa, and Grandma went to Aunt Flory's for dinner, and we had them here for supper. We had a nice time. January 2nd, went to school. After the nice long vacation we had, it seems horrid. Two new boys came in our room. One is the new minister's son, and his name is Paul Jones. Got a book from our library. When I came home in the afternoon, Mother and Ruth had gone to Grandma's. So I practiced and did my spelling. Daddy helped me with arithmetic. We are having problems in percentage. Thursday the 3rd, went to school. Aunt Catherine telephoned at noon that Uncle Roderick was very sick and he was going to the hospital. He was operated on at 4 p.m. for append, appendicitis, I believe, and she probably couldn't spell it. <laughs> Daddy was at the hospital until about 8 o'clock. Then Uncle George brought him home. Aunt Kath came too, and we gave she and Daddy a little lunch. Um, then they went back to the hospital. Friday the 4th, at school we are doing a lot of penmanship because we have to send in our papers and try to get a certificate. This afternoon I asked Mrs. Myers how my geography was and she said it was alright. She said that all my other lessons were splendid and that I was a fine little girl. Didn't have any spelling tonight. Sorry, I heard something outside. It sounded like a tree falling. Uncle Rod seems to be getting along all right. Saturday the 5th, expected Miss Robinson, but she did not come. I do wish she would come. I will be so behind in my music. Oof, my stomach. <laughs> in the morning, Ruth and I walked down to Grandma's and back. Mother went downtown and she bought me some tablets for school and a hair ribbon. It is much colder and we think it will snow in the morning. Uncle Rod is about the same. Sunday the 6th, when we got up this morning, the ground was covered with snow. Had to wear my Arctic, Ar Arctics to Sunday school because my ankle hurt. I forgot to look that up, um, what the Arctics were. Well, probably, probably boots. If I've looked it up and found it, it's over here. Had to wear my Arctics to Sunday school because my ankle hurt. The cold seems to affect it. Uh, remember, she's got... Um, Oh no, what's the word with her joints? Uh, shoot, forgetting the word. Oh well, it's over here if I remember. <laughs> In the afternoon, Daddy, Mother, uh, Ruth and I walked to Vine Street. Mother and Ruth turned there and went to Grandma's and Daddy and I through Cheeseman Park. Then we went to Grandma's. Aunt Flory, Uncle Gurdon and James and Betty were there. Now about this Cheeseman Park, I, you know, I looked it up just to see what it looked like um, and get an idea. So they lived a bit east of Cheeseman Park and uh, the park itself <clears throat> has an interesting history and I thought I'd share that. Um, it was built over a 19th century cemetery called Mount Prospect Cemetery and not all the bodies were moved out of the cemetery before that happened. Um, most of the bodies were those of paupers and criminals for some reason. But uh, so the story is in 1893, the city hired a local undertaker named Edward McGovern. And they, hi they um, hired him at $1.90 a head to relocate the graves. He used small coffins and his employees were instructed to fill each one with a skull um, or an arm or a leg or whatnot, kind of spread it out and get paid more. 
Uh, a few months later, he was fired, and the city just went ahead and built the park. <laughs> so um, they suspect uh, there are still over 2,000 bodies that were never removed, and occasionally, I guess, they find some. Uh, they also think some of the bodies may have been smallpox victims, so that was also kind of, people were hesitant to move them for fear of getting smallpox. And apparently the, the park might be haunted. Folklore tells of children playing and then suddenly vanishing in the park, of a beautiful woman singing, of spirits wandering lost because their headstones are gone. So, uh, that's, that's Cheeseman Park. Monday the 7th helped mother went to school, mother took Ruth over to Aunt Flory's and left my lunch on the table while she went downtown. When I got home in the afternoon, mother was home. Then I went to Aunt Flory's to get Ruth, did arithmetic and penmanship before supper and studied geography afterwards. Um, Dad had to go back to work. As for Dad's work, um, I mentioned before, he works for the Maury Mercantile Company. And, um, okay, let's see. Uh, that was established in 1880, 1884, and they sold coffee, spices, and canned goods, brooms, matches, writing tablets, and cigars. Um, in 1896, construction began on the new six-story building at the corner of Wincoop and 16th. So that was still there when he worked for them, so he probably went to that building a lot. It had a roasting plant, a spice grinding department, extract laboratory and print shop. In 1902, Chester Morey, who started the company, launched the Solitaire brand, which sold their best-selling canned goods, you know, spices, coffee, canned fruit, and canned vegetables. So uh, the 1910 census said that her father, uh, his occupation was manager credit, wholesale grocery. And in 1920, his occupation was listed as treasurer, grocery company. So he had various jobs at the Maury Mercantile Company, which is no longer in existence. Um, Tuesday the 8th, went to school. Mother took Ruth downtown with her. They left my lunch and I was just having a fine time. Had sewing in the afternoon. Brought my nighty home and mother says it is cut wrong. Did arithmetic and studied geography. Daddy didn't go back at night. Wednesday the 9th asked Mrs. Myers about the nightgown and she said it was supposed to be cut narrower in the back as I have it. But I didn't show it to her and that made mother very cross. So I am going to bring the pattern home. No lessons except spelling to do. Thursday the 10th, very cold and snowy, went to school. In the morning, Miss Robinson telephoned mother that she was home and will be here Saturday. In the afternoon, worked on my nightgown, studied geography at night, finished uh, our penmanship papers. Mrs. Myers sent Miss Baker, the gym teacher, in gymnastics time and told her to let us have a good time. So we played a game and the girls beat the boys once. Friday the 11th, very, very cold. My hands got so cold that I could hardly hold my books. They sent in a report of how many stamps were sold. The elementary turned in $1,000 in about three weeks. Had a good geography lesson. Went to the gym to play. So those are the, uh, what are they called? The um, da -da 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 -da, thrift stamps. Those are the thrift stamps uh, that were being sold to finance the war. Um, so a little history on those as well. Uh, these were created for people who couldn't afford the smallest valued bonds, which were $50. So these were, uh, these were 25 cents each and often targeted at immigrants and school children. Uh, when 16 were collected, they could be exchanged for war saving stamps or certificates, which bore interest compounded quarterly at 4% and were tax free. So they were selling these uh, thrift stamps and they sold a thousand dollars worth, which is uh, worth today eighteen thousand dollars, eighteen thousand four hundred and seven dollars and fifteen cents. So they that sounds like a lot to me. Saturday the twelfth, Miss Robinson came at last, had a good lesson. Grandpa came up in the morning. Mother left our lunch and went downtown when Miss Robinson went. 
Ruth and I had our lunch and then I put her to bed. Mother came home and stayed about five minutes and then she went to Grandma's. Played checkers with Daddy at night. He beat me all to nothing. Very cold. Sunday the 13th, I went to Sunday school, but it was too cold for Ruth to go. In the afternoon, Daddy and I walked over to Uncle Gurdon's to take back a book a man lent Uncle Gurdon, and he lent it to Daddy. James and Betty had their sled, and Uncle G pulled Betty and I over to the man's house. We had lots of fun. Dad and I got home about a quarter to six. Monday the 14th, helped Mother, went to school, got another book. It is a book of ballad stories. Seems very interesting so far. So I looked that up, and that was written in 1906 by Mary MacLeod. And it's a book of ballads from the 11th to 18th centuries, which she had rewritten in verse. After school, did the tucks on my nightgown. Had an awful time with them at first. Mrs. Myers said my geography was very good. Did spelling and geography at night. Thursday the 15th, took a sweater over to Mrs. Coy's. We had sewing in the afternoon. Mrs. Myers let the girls go in the auditorium, and then she sang for us because we begged her to. Mother went to Grandma's in the afternoon, practiced, quite cold all day, went to the gym at noon, and had more fun than a picnic. There's a thing called the giant's stride, and you hang on and whirl around like 60. So that means really fast. And I looked that up, and I kind of figured what it was, but yeah, it's this uh, fun thing that I think is probably banned uh, in most places now, as they do with every fun playground piece of equipment. Um, so it's, it kind of looks like a maypole and they have ropes with a with a handle on the end and you just hold on and run and then you just fly around in a circle. Um, but apparently, you know, bigger, stronger kids can take advantage of that and kind of, <laughs> kind of um, send the little kids flying, you know, because they can't, <laughs> they can't get off. Um, so yes, okay, it can be dangerous, but so many things can be dangerous. It looks like fun, and I kind of want to find one. I wonder if there are any anywhere. Um, it's like those other little things that you, you would sit on and, and spin and go around and fly off sometimes. Uh, it's hard to find those now, too. There's actually one back in Pennsylvania, and my sister and I were playing on it this past year, and it, I don't know, they fixed it so it it wouldn't even go around once like you couldn't even sit on it and spin I don't know part of me wants to go there and loosen some bolts it's not fun that way <sighs> oh danger come on we all survived well I guess I can't say we all survived but I'm, I'm assuming most of us survived the fun things giant stride Wednesday the 16th helped mother she and Ruth went downtown. When I came home, there was my lunch on the table, the kitchen table. The baked beans were on the stove and monkey nut butter on the table. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I didn't look it up. Uh, monkey nut butter. Had a few other things besides. Practiced 35 minutes, did spelling, studied geography. Thursday the 17th, went to school as usual. Went to the gym in the morning to do gymnastics and in the afternoon to play. Some time ago, Dad was given a picture of Harry Lauder. He is in town now, and in the afternoon he came with a friend to Maury Mercantile Company, and he signed that picture. Daddy is going to hear him tonight. So I looked him up because I wasn't familiar with him. Sir Harry Lauder was a Scottish singer and comedian, and I assume at that time yeah, okay, so his son died in 1916 uh, fighting on the Western Front. And after that, I think he started leading charity fundraising efforts and entertained troops in France as well. So I'm guessing he went on a, a, you know, a fundraising tour and stopped in Denver. Friday the 18th, sewed on my nightgown before I went to school. All the morning, most of the girls sewed because we pass in the afternoon. Got my report card, passed into 7B. Have to <clears throat> buy or take my lunch now because 
I am in what they call junior high. I think it's horrid. Only I am so glad we will have Mrs. Myers most of the time. There is the low six, high six and seven B in our room. Evelyn Dreesen is in low six and a lot of other little kids. I don't think I wrote down her name. Speaking of her friends, um, let's see, this is this 18th. Evelyn, what? I don't even know if that's a D. I don't know. I, I don't know what letter that is. I will just copy it the way she. Uh, yeah, I can't actually read. <laughs> I don't think that's a D, but I don't know what it would be. But speaking of her friends, I did look up a couple of the other ones she mentioned last week, and one of her friends had a bit of an interesting life, and I will talk about that at the end. Um, Saturday the 19th, had a music lesson, very cold all day, went to the car with Miss Robinson. As it was snowing, I took an umbrella because she didn't want to get her hat wet. Took a sweater over to Mrs. Coy's. Mother went to Grandma's in the afternoon. Dad went to see Uncle Rod after supper. He is getting along nicely. Sunday the 20th, Ruth and I went to Sunday school. Stayed home all the afternoon. Aunt Flory came up as we were having supper. Aunt Ella came, um, came by soon after that, I think. Quite, maybe that's a Q. Looks like her Q, I don't know. Quite cold all day. We got some eggs from some people who are cousins of Nielsen's. The little boy brings them. Monday the 21st helped mother, brought my lunch, bought my lunch at school. I don't like to stay for lunch at all. Told Hilda what I wanted to take, wait, told Hilda what I wanted and she got it for me. Had mashed potatoes and gravy, weenie wurt sandwich and pie a la mode, which is pie with ice cream. The cream was better than the pie. Went to Aunt Flory's in the afternoon and took Ruth with me. Did my spelling when I came home. Tuesday the 22nd, practiced 10 minutes before I went to school. Went to another room for geography, took my lunch in a candy box and ate it. The lunch, not the candy box. In the lunchroom. Went to the cooking room after lunch and took notes. It's all right to be in 7B, um, but I certainly hate staying there all day. Went for some eggs, did spelling. Daddy uh, bought me book for cooking that we have to have. Wednesday the 23rd, went to school. We go to Miss Carson's room for geography. Took my lunch to school, had sandwiches, a slice of pie, and an apple. We girls go to Miss a good shawl's room after lunch. Today we cut the pattern for our cooking aprons. For reading, our class went to the library. At assembly this morning, Dr. Mead spoke. Thursday 24th went to school, had to take so many books that I forgot my apron for cooking. Not the real one, but a little one we had to have. So I told Mrs. Myers and she let me come home for it. In cooking today, we washed the little stoves and soap dishes and put our desks in order. The desks are where all the pans and things are kept. Uh, mother went downtown to get all the things I need. Friday the 25th went off about a block towards school when I discovered that I had forgotten my lunch. Had to go back after it. A little play was given at assembly. Grandma came up today, but I didn't see because I have to stay at school. Mother cut my cooking apron out and I have a cap. Nice, warm, and sunny all day. Saturday the 26th, Miss Robinson came and br uh, brought a cold snowy day with her, like last Saturday. <laughs> went over to get the eggs. Mother went downtown and got some blue serge for my gymnasium bloomers. Oh yes, and they look like this or something like this. We don't know what her bloomers actually look like, but something like that. In the afternoon, Uncle Reg and Aunt Jean, who are in town for the stock show, came up. At night, Daddy and I played rope, rope toss with Ruth. Sunday the 27th went to Sunday school through the snow. Dr. Richmond came in the afternoon and left some more medicine. 
After that, uh, the three of us, Daddy, Ruth, and I went for a walk. It was very cold. When we got home, the boy had brought the eggs. Uh, he is a Dane and is very funny. He lives at Edgewater. <laughs> Monday the 28th, went to the gym. Had lots of fun. At noon, we went to cooking and learned how to measure. Mother has started my gym bloomers. Made the buttonholes on my apron. And we know how she loves making buttonholes. Practiced half an hour in the afternoon. Tuesday the 29th, sewed two buttons on my apron. And then I found that mother had sewed on all the rest. Cooked at school, we made baking powder drop biscuits. We only make part of the recipe. I got two of the biscuits. I, I mean, I made two. Wednesday the 30th, mother finished my gymnasium bloomers and I wore them to school. After school, some of the girls stayed and played in the gym. Uh, we had lots of fun. It is so cold in the parlor, I can hardly write. Thursday the 31st, mother gave me the money to buy pie with, but they didn't have the kind I wanted, so I didn't get any. Had lots of fun in school, throwing paper balls at everybody. Very cold, wore two sweaters and my coat to school. Oh, I, I remember throwing things at each other. Cool. So much fun. Friday the 1st of February. Got up late and had to rush to school. At assembly, a man of the prison association spoke. Went to, draw went to drawing after that. Had sewing after lunch. When I got home from school, mother wasn't here. Practiced half an hour and did spelling. Mother and Ruth have been to Aunt Flory's. Saturday the 2nd, had a music lesson. After Miss Robinson had gone, Ruth and I went to Grandma's. I was supposed to bring home the meat, but I didn't know it and came home without it. Then Aunt Ella telephoned that James was there and he would bring it up. Mother went downtown and she bought me a hair ribbon. She tried to get me a lunchbox, but could only get a very scratched one. Mother says she will take it back. Did arithmetic after supper and played snap. Sunday the 3rd, Ruth and I went to Sunday school. After that, I went to Grandma's. In the afternoon, we went out to Aunt Nora's. Daddy saw her at the meeting, and she said she would be home. Uncle Alec was working and didn't get home until about half past five. We stayed and had a swell supper. We had a very nice time and got home about 9 p.m. Nice and warm about all day, though at night it got quite cold. Monday the 4th, went to school. A lady sang at assembly and she sang eight pieces. After that, the girls of our room went to the gym, but we only had half the time we should have had because assembly took so long. Had pie and ice cream for dinner and also sandwiches and celery. Mother left Ruth at Aunt Flory's while she went downtown. Mother got some beautiful blue serge for a dress for me. So I wasn't quite sure what serge was, so I looked that up and serge is a type of twill fabric that has diagonal lines or ridges on both sides made with a two up, two down weave, which doesn't really clarify it for me, but okay. Tuesday the 5th, went to school. It was the day for music in the assembly. At cooking, we made creamed potatoes and they were very good. Mother and Ruth went to grandma's, practiced and did spelling, very windy in the afternoon. Wednesday the 6th, helped mother, had sewing and cut my bloomers out. The teacher wants us to save pieces of flannel and take them to school, and Miss Lewis or Mrs. Myers will show us how to cut them. They're used to stuff pillows for the uh, wounded soldiers. I bet we don't do things like that anymore. Thursday the 7th, went to school, got an A in geography. It was a composition about coffee, and we traced maps and put on the coffee regions. Went to drawing after assembly, had music in the auditorium. When I got home, nobody was here, but a note which said to go to Aunt Flory's, so I did. The dressmaker lives near her, and we wanted to see her, but she wasn't home. We waited at Aunt Flory's, and finally she came home. Went for a ride on James's wagon. Had to learn <clears throat> a piece about Lincoln, and Dad helped me. We have to talk about one of four subjects at school. I chose the greatest American. My throat's really dry. Sorry. Friday the 8th, helped mother. 
When we got up, the snow was very deep, but in the afternoon it was quite warm. Bought ice cream for my lunch. Mrs. Myers said my piece about Lincoln was fine, and she made me tell it all over again because uh, a teacher came in. Saturday night, had a music lesson. While I was having it, James and Betty came in. Ruth and I went to Grandma's. When, she was, when I was getting ready to go, I couldn't find my scarf. Must have left it at school. I do hope I will get it. Daddy went to Ellsworth Street. Mother and I played snap with Ruth. Mother went downtown and bought me a lunchbox. Sunday the 10th, Daddy gave me a ring that Uncle Granger gave him last night for me. It belonged to Aunt Alice, and she used to value it very much. Went to Sunday school. After Ruth had her nap, Dad, Ruth, and I went for a walk. We walked away up Cook Street to a church in the little town of Harmon. Uh, she spelled that wrong, and then I figured out what it really is. It's H-A-R-M-A-N, and not O-N, like she wrote. And I found a picture of what might have been that church. Um, hold on, I'll just keep reading and then I'll talk about Harmon. We walked away further and came to a building which had Town Hall printed on it. It was like a way out in the country. It seemed like we had stepped into an old-fashioned country town. So, the town of Harmon, um, which is now Cherry Creek was founded by a Confederate veteran and his wife who relocated from Mississippi in 1872. The town was officially founded in 1882, but the official vote on incorporation didn't pass until 1886. Sorry, I think it's interesting. According to 1887 uh, Denver Times article, Harbin incorporated because irrigation for crops and trees was needed for protection against tramps, bums, bummers, in quotation mark, that says roughneck hoodlums, and the liquor traffic. Then the Panic of 1893 hit, which I'm not familiar with, and, and have limited time to research everything in history. But Colorado suffered due to the collapse of silver prices, and then towns like Harmon uh, went bankrupt, and then the residents voted to become part of Denver in 1894. So by 1895, that town hall building that she saw, I assume, was no longer used as a town hall, and it, it uh, served purposes like housing the police station and fire department. I don't know what it was uh, housing in 1918, and now I guess it's a private residence. Someone bought it. So the church, I think she might have seen, was probably at 4th Street and Cook Street, since they walked up Cook Street, and it is the 4th Avenue Congregational Church. I'm actually not sure if that's still there or not, but I found an old picture of it. So that's probably the church she mentioned walking up Cook Street. And another piece of trivia about uh, Harmon or Cherry Creek is that it's got a legacy of black homesteaders and by the 1920s it was considered a suburb and still largely an African-American neighborhood. So that's your Colorado trivia having this really dry feeling in my throat. <clears> throat. I'm not sure what causes that. Monday the, th the 11th. Monday the 11th. <laughs> Went to school. At assembly, a man talked about Lincoln, and he talked for such a long time that we only had about 25 minutes for gymnasium. Had to stay after school for gym. Also had lots of fun in the rings. Um, you can climb into them and uh, go swinging around fine. Found my scarf. Found my scarf. It was on the table for lost articles. Studied reading at night. Tuesday the 12th. Didn't have to go to school because it is Lincoln's birthday. Helped mother. Practiced. After I got through with that, Ruth and I went to grandma's. Aunt Ella lent me a lot of her music. In the afternoon, played outside with Ruth. Wednesday the 13th, went to school. At assembly, Mrs. Switzer said we could have a Valentine box. Mother went out with Grandma and Aunt Flory, and Ruth uh, stayed at Grandma's with Aunt Ella. At noon, I ate my lunch outside on the gas tank lawn. Practiced. Mrs. Myers gave us another subject to talk on Friday. It is about the most interesting lesson we have had in English. 
um, something my Valentine. Uh, I'm not sure. Something my Valentine. Thursday the 14th, went to school, put my Valentine in the box. Got 10 Valentines in the afternoon when the box was opened. In the afternoon, we went to the dressmakers with mother. My dress is going to be so pretty. It is going to have pockets of the goods. I am not sure. <laughs> A collar of blue silk and the belt of the silk. After that, we went to Aunt Flory's. Got a very pretty Valentine from James. Friday the 15th, did my arithmetic before I went to school. At assembly, the first act of Little Women was given. It was very good. Mrs. Myers said she would let us talk for a minute on the subject we had for English, and then someone else would tell theirs. When I started to give mine, she said it was so good that I could have more than a minute. Saturday the 16th helped mother. Miss Robinson came and she gave me a lot of new scales. After that, Ruth and I walked over to the dressmakers, but she wasn't ready for me, as uh, so we went over to Aunt Flory's to wait. When we came home, we had lunch, and then Mother went downtown. She bought me a hair ribbon to wear with my new dress. Went to the dressmakers again, but my dress isn't finished yet. Sunday the 17th, went to Sunday school in the morning. James and Betty came here from Sunday school and stayed quite a while. When Daddy came home from the meeting, he said that Uncle Rod wanted us to go riding with them. Aunt Grace runs the auto because Uncle Rod can't. When we got away out in the country, a tire blew out. They told Daddy what to do, and so they got it on. Aunt Grace took us out there to supper. Had a fine time. Monday the 18th, thought I would be late to school, but I'm glad to say I wasn't. After assembly, the girls went to the gym. Had to take a shower. I hate it. Didn't turn the water on full, but it was bad enough that way. Had to stay for gym after school, too. The girls' basketball team played East Denver, and East beat 18-2. to two. Very cold coming home. Tuesday the 19th helped mother. Went to school, made vanilla sauce, and put it over oatmeal at cooking. Practiced 35 minutes after school, did spelling, worked on arithmetic until after 9 o'clock, and then I was so tired I cried. Wednesday the 20th, went to school. Got the problems I did last night all right. Had penmanship in the morning, and we stood up to spell. Went with mother to the dressmakers. She is going to fix my dress a little. Daddy helped me with a little talk we have to make tomorrow. It is called on class spirit and what I would like it to be. Thursday the 21st had drawing in the morning, made my speech in the afternoon, and Mrs. Myers said that it was very good. I noticed that the others had much better talks, and I think I must have set the example. Practiced when I got home from school. Aunt Ella came up for a little while. Friday the 22nd had a holiday because it is Washington's birthday. Helped mother. After that, went for a walk with Daddy and Ruth took five pictures. We went to the park and had a fine time. It seemed just like summer. Uncle Rod, Aunt Grace, Frederick, and Mary came to dinner. We asked them to last Sunday. Soon after we finished dinner, we went for a ride. Then Mother made them stay to supper. Had a fine day. Saturday, Saturday the 23rd. Hmm, helped Mother. Had a music lesson. Did my spelling and some English. Mother went to the dressmakers and to grandma's. After Ruth had her nap, we played outside with the tricycle. We had an early supper and then went to Ellsworth Street. Aunt Nora and Uncle Alec came in while we were there. Uncle George brought us home and he also took us downtown. We had a very nice time. Sunday the 24th went to Sunday school with Ruth. Uncle Rod telephoned that he was coming to take us for a ride. We had our dinner in a hurry as it looked like it was going to storm. Had a fine ride. As Uncle Rod can't drive, I sit in the front with Aunt Grace. Got home at about five o'clock and had supper. Dad opened my little bank and there was $4.87 in it and I never knew it. So that is about $89.64 today. Well done. Monday the 25th, went to the gym, took a shower, made tomato sauce and put it over macaroni Macaroni? I don't know. <laughs> Macaronis. 
made uh, made this at cooking, not when I took a shower. <laughs> at, uh, had to stay after school for gym. There was a game and I didn't get home until five minutes to six. I'm afraid mother will not let me stay anymore. Didn't have any lessons to do. When I came from the gym, I left my lunchbox in my basket. It is a wonder I don't forget my head. Tuesday the 26th, bought a war stamp with um, $4.13, I think, of my money. Uh, we made cream of corn soup at cooking. I didn't like it very well. Practiced half an hour after I got home from school. Did my spelling, studied English, and reading after supper. Wednesday the 27th, snowed in the night. Went to school. There was a play given at assembly. Coming home from school, the snow was so deep I could hardly walk. Couldn't see our steps when I got to them. After supper, Daddy helped me with my talk for Friday. Mrs. Myers said we could choose anything we wanted. Mine is going to be the mountain parks of Denver. Thursday the 28th, uh, went to school through very deep snow. Singing day in assembly. In geography, we had to write about flax and, mm, and something she slash the geography teacher, okay, said mine was very good. Aunt Ella was here when I got home. Did arithmetic. Dad is going to Mr. Mori's for dinner tonight. Oh, he knows Mr. Mori personally. That's pretty cool. So now we're into March. <sighs> but we are already... It's already been a pretty long video, I think. And I wanted to tell you about her friend, Ruth Tobin. Um, I guess we'll stop there for now. Otherwise, this might get too long. I don't know if I can read a whole another month. <laughs> I'm trying to be better at this. I mean, I don't want this to last forever, but you know, that that's pretty long, I think, today. So I'm going to stop there. And um, maybe I'll read the second part of it. Uh, well, maybe I'll just sit and read a second parter today for you. I mean... It's a second parter, you won't get it today, but I will sit here and, and read it today and make a second video. Hmm? Why not, since I've already made my notes. But I'm going to tell you about her friend, Ruth Tobin, because I found her interesting. So she mentioned her friend Ruth Tobin in her past diary, and she probably plays with her again here. Um, she had another Ruth friend as well, and her sister, of course. Ruth is a popular name, I suppose. Mm. However, I believe that the girl she plays with named Ruth Tobin was born in 1908 and died in 2006. And she uh, became a Roman Catholic nun. I'm not sure uh, when. But her, she changed her name to Mary Luke Tobin. And uh, I'm gonna read some of the notes I have about her. She was one of only 15 women auditors invited to the Second Vatican Council and the only American woman of the three women religious permitted to participate on the council's planning commissions. Um, so they were allowed to go, but not like to participate or speak, just to listen. But she did get to speak a bit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. She was also inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame in 1997. She managed a dance school while attending Loretto Heights College in Denver. Uh, she was a former Superior General of the Sisters of Loretto and was president of the congregation from 1958 to 1970. She did much of her work in Denver, but traveled the world on missions for peace, including visits to Saigon, Paris, El Salvador, and Northern Ireland. While living at the Loretto Mother House in Kentucky, in a town I can't pronounce, Nerinx, she became friends with Trappist monk Thomas Merton. Uh, I know of him and have not read any of his things yet. So many things on my list. Um, <clears throat> after his death, she co-founded the International Thomas Merton Society and also established the Thomas Merton Center for Creative Exchange in Denver. She gave Merton retreats and co-founded a Buddhist Christian dialogue slash meditation group in Denver. She supported women's ordination to the priesthood 
opposed nuclear proliferation, supported the United Farm Workers, and took on sorry, the Blue Diamond Coal Company by using Loretto's shares to challenge the firm's practices and took part in nonviolent actions at Rocky Flats Nuclear Weapons Plant, the U.S. Air Force Academy, and Martin Marietta in Colorado. Apparently she wrote a book called Hope is an Open Door. Uh, with a brief search, I could not find it. I am curious. Um, there are a couple interviews with her online and one on YouTube. I have not started that yet. I just found that today. And I do want to watch that because I think she sounds like an interesting woman. Um, one thing I did cut out from uh, one of her interviews, she said um, awards were given out on that final day of Vatican II. There were, there were four artists who marched forward and received a little certificate from the Pope. There were four musicians who marched forward and received a certificate. They were followed by four literary figures and then four philosophers. Finally, four women marched forward to receive certificates. I turned to a friend and said, that's all wrong. Women shouldn't be receiving some special honor from the church. Women and men make up the church. If they're going to give women awards for being women, then they should be giving men awards for being men. Women are not a category in the church. Along with men, we are the church. So, I, I yeah, I just um, appreciate the work she did. Uh, she had a nice quote someone shared. Um, Go out on a limb, that's where the fruit is. And I like that. Um, she just seemed like an interesting person. I wish I could find more information on my actual diarist, but I was really surprised to find so much about her friend, Ruth Tobin. I'm gonna um, share some links in the description to the articles and interviews with her in case you're interested, because I think that's interesting and I really, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I, I really enjoy hearing about women who are making a difference in the world and working for equality and especially within the church. I mean, I'm not Catholic, I was Protestant, um, but uh, there was definitely and is definitely a lot of sexism and uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, she sounds ahead of her time, although I'm not, you know, aware of all the activists that have been working. I mean, I think women have been fighting for a long time for equality and just basic rights. But uh, well done, Mary Luke Tobin. I'm happy to learn about her. Um, so I wanted to share that, you know. Um, and that's, that's it. I'm going to have this book, the PDF, available through my Buy Me a Coffee if you wanted to get that. Uploading that there. Still have to scan 1919, but we've got some time. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I've been reading that other diary um, from the girl in London, 1937, and I finally have her full name and a little more information on her. I decided I have to start typing that one out. So I started typing. I'm still in January. It's a very big diary. That one might take a while um, to read and then to read to you guys. But it's interesting. Really? The three o'clock feeding. I should let the cats in. They probably want that. Um, but that's an interesting one so far. I'm still in January and I've decided to start typing that up a while because it's gonna it's gonna take a while to read and a while to type and I want to be ready uh, and I'm still working on Eliza's I'm in May now <laughs> my transcribing it um, yeah I guess it's getting a little easier to read but I still miss words so hopefully you know when we're done with Edith uh, uh, we'll move on to Eliza because I wanted to do that I think I think this could work out Anyway, I will do some live streams on Instagram, I think, um, with the diaries, like reading bits and pieces. Maybe I'll do it on <clears throat> YouTube as well. I'm not really sure what platform's the best. Not sure if I can do it at the same time, but maybe I can with a computer and a phone. <laughs> same live stream. <laughs> um, but 
uh, kind of looking forward to that. I think that would be fun and interactive. So let me know if you'll be there, what days work, I don't know, and I will try to alert you. If you follow me on Instagram, I will definitely be letting you know there. So I'll try to do the first one maybe next week or something, or this week, I don't know, I don't know. But I think that's all I have to say for now, and we will chat again later. And I'm gonna take a little break and then read <laughs> read another two months uh, or more. I don't know. I only I only prepared four months, so we'll see. Try to be prepared, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta wing it. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye.